in the previous video, we find that we got in trouble because of the price variations over time, right? The prices are not constant. They can change over time. So here, we want to find some way um, we, which we could exclude the effect of the change in price levels. In other words, we could squeeze out the inflation, okay, or the influence of inflation. Now, there are multiple ways we could do that, but here uh, in the introductory course, we just want to introduce uh, the simplest way, okay. So here, we get in trouble simply because the prices are changing, right? Now, what we need to do, our natural response would be, don't let the price change, right? If we keep the price, the, the prices constant or fixed, then we won't get in that trouble, right? So that's pretty much what we're going to do. We're going to pick a base year and always use the base year prices. Here, base year means the benchmark year, okay? And then once we pick the, that year, then we will, you know, keep the prices fixed. Okay, um, the base year in practice could be the first year, it could be the last year in your sample period, or it could be any year in between. Okay, it's totally up to you or whoever is doing that data connection or doing that kind of research. Okay, um, now with the base year in our mind, we would be able to talk about the definitions of nominal GDP and real GDP. Okay. Nominal GDP means GDP valued at the current price levels. Okay. Current means the current year. So if we're talking about 2019, then uh, we're going to use 2019 price levels for nominal GDP. Okay. And the real GDP means uh, GDP valued at the price levels in the base year. So, for example, in the previous exam, uh, the previous uh, table, okay, like uh, with that hypothetical economy, if we take the very first year, 2017, as a base year, then um, when we look at the output uh, in 2019, we don't use 2019 prices. We go back and use 2017 prices. That will give us 2019's real GDP. Okay. All right. Now, to help you better understand these methods, we're going to go back and use the, um, the table uh, or the hypothetical economy we created before. Okay. Now, here um, you see the exactly same numbers we did before. Okay. So the same prices, quantities, the same uh, three years. Okay. And at this point, we know, you know, the calculation we did before should be called nominal GDP because they always use that year's price, right? For example, um, again, 2017, we use $1 as a price of Coke and $2 as a price of cheeseburger, right? So we always use the current price levels. Now, I would suggest you to pause the video in trying to figure out the real GDP for th these three years, okay? Let's take 2017, the very first year, as the base year, okay? And go ahead and get a scratch paper and a pencil and trying to figure out the real GDP for these three years. All right, now let's check out what we got here, okay? For 20, let's start with the 2019, okay, the very last year. Now, uh, the economy produces 100 Cokes and 200 cheeseburgers in that year, right? But when we calculate real GDP in 2019, we're not going to use the 2019 prices. We are supposed to go all the way back to 2017, the base year, and use those prices. So the price of Coke should be $1, price of cheeseburger should be $2, right? So we're going to use $1 times 100. The quantity is still the current one, okay? Plus $2 times 200. Now here, we got 
$500 as the real GDP in 2019. Okay. Similarly, in 2018, we also go back and use 2017 prices. That will give us the same GDP, the same real GDP number, $500. Okay. Now for 2017, we find that the real GDP is $250. Here, you can think about these three numbers we just got. Do they make economic sense? You would find that now they're making perfect economic sense, right? Because when we look at the last two years, 2019 and 2018, as we said before, the economy produces the same amount of Cokes and cheeseburgers between these two years, right? So their GDP in these two years are supposed to be exactly the same. Here we got 500 and 500, right? Uh, when we look at the first two years, 2017 and 2018, the quantity of Cokes and cheeseburgers doubled, right? So we would expect that the GDP numbers should be doubled between these two years. Now here in 2017, we find it's 250. In 2018, it's 500. It does double, okay? So here, by using the base year prices, we squeeze out the inflation okay or deflation or any change in price levels now we don't have to worry about that we you know the the difference in our gdp numbers would simply tell us the change in quantities okay which is pretty good it's what we want now here let's go back and revisit our opening questions okay um we said that you know when we compare the growth of output okay across countries we actually use real gdp growth rate right does it make sense now of course we're supposed to use real gdp because when we say you know united states is um, producing three percent more than what we did last year what we actually mean is we produce 3% more um, in terms of quantities, right? Not the price. We're not trying to say that, you know, because this year the prices are higher, so we were producing um, that the GDP numbers are higher. Now, we're trying to tell you that in terms of the quantities of, for example, laptops, cars, uh, smartphones, and all other things we produce, the quantities are increasing by 3%. Okay. We say that, for example, India, um, the uh, GDP growth rate is uh, 7%. That means in terms of the quantities, they produce 7% more. Okay, So here I made um, a table uh, to show you, you know, I'm just trying a different way to show you the difference between nominal GDP, that's end GDP here, and the real GDP, our GDP here. Okay, so. Uh, here is the math, right? NGP, NGDP, we use the current price times the current quantities. RGDP, we use base year prices times current quantities. So in terms of the change uh, captured by NGDP, the change could come from two sources. The first one is a change in prices. The second one is a change in quantities. Of course, you can find a combination um, of these two, right? But when we find a change in real GDP, like in the previous case, uh, the real GDP increases from $250 to $500 between 2017 and 2018. That change can only come from the quantities, okay? Because the prices are the same. So when we see an increase in real GDP, we know this economy produces more uh, this year, okay, compared to the previous year. Now, uh, we also uh, raised another question, or, or I showed you another map um, um, at the beginning of this chapter. We said when we compare uh, the income level across countries, 
um, we actually find that on this map we use the nominal GDP per capita, right? Um, you know, because of the, the discussion we already had, you are probably under the impression that real GDP is better, is superior, right? It's kind of the pure change in quantities. We don't have to be bothered with the change in prices. Now, why here when we compare the income levels across the countries, we went back and used nominal GDP? I want to leave these for you guys to think about okay, as an assignment. And then during our online virtual meeting, we can talk about this. Okay? Uh, this will give you another chance to better understand the difference between nominal and real GDP. Okay? Uh, what I can tell you is there might be more than one answers. Okay? So again, try your best.